little project I'm going to be working on. I could try and get it done tonight really in one go, but I don't know if I will. It's a little remote control Arduino board. I've had a go at using a couple of different methods of communicating with Arduino. I've used some of these little, what they kind of, um, I, I think they're RF, FM transmitter receiver units. They come as a little board about so big of a little antenna on. I don't actually know where they are right now. I should be able to find one. Ah, oh, here we go. Big mess being made. Here it is. So this is another unit I've been working on, and I've got these little FM receiver modules. I just glued that one in this box, but there it is. They're quite useful for doing remote control jobs. This is a little computer that I'm going to be pulling inside my garden shed with some solar panels. This will be a little monitor system, and I'm going to have a little remote viewer for the data from, from the charger and the, the system and maybe a remote to turn a light and a heater on and off. A bit like your wireless weather vanes or weather stations you might have in the garden with a little receiver unit. So the thing with these transmitters is they do work two way but you can only use them one way at a time so you have to use the Arduino to set this one up as a transmitter. You transmit your data probably with some sort of carrier data like a passcode or a key to stop stop it just picking up any old random data. Once it's received the data at the other end you'd then send or trigger it to somehow switch this one back into a receiver and then you would basically switch this between a receiver and a transmitter to be able to transmit and receive data. So at some end you need a protocol that's actually going to change this. It doesn't do it at the same time. You could do it at the same time, but in, in total you'd need four of these modules. You'd need one in this end to transmit, another one over here to receive, and at the other end you need a, a transmit and receive. For this particular project, I don't need to transmit and receive. I just wanted to trigger something at, at the other end remotely, like some LEDs in the camper van or some sort of joke sound box or something like that. So I found these little kits on eBay here. Quite cute really, I quite like this plastic that's uh, a bit metallic, almost got like a wood effect to it. Inside a little 12 volt battery, very simple little circuit, nice little retro antenna comes out and under here are some buttons, A, B, C, D. The other end is a little receiver unit, it seems to have some sort of microprocessor on board, seems to have some receiver unit, little antenna, little tuning thing that's been glued. And then I think this chip, without looking it up, is connected to the outputs. I'm guessing is some sort of uh, output driver. And the number is 2272AN. I, I haven't got a computer on to look it up, but I'm going to assume it's an output driver to give these pins a little bit of current. Should be enough to light some LEDs, maybe one LED per pin. Any more than that, you'll probably need a driver such as a transistor or a MOSFET. Hopefully what I'm going to do is run four outputs from there into an Arduino board and then use the Arduino board to drive this little module here. This little module is an MP3 module. It takes a micro SD card. If I've got a micro SD card just have a random rummage around and see if I can find one. Not one there. Ah, dee 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 dee. Yeah, here we go. What size is this micro SD? Oh yeah, it's a 128 gigabyte micro SD. That will do. I doubt this thing supports 128 gigabyte. I will find an old one gig or something like that. On this board, and I've used this board before, you don't name your MP3s. You have to rename them. And you just name them as file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4. And then you send commands to it using a serial transmission from here saying play file 1, play file 2, play file 3. Little headphone unit on the back and I believe there's a small amount of amplification out of there but not much. I, I've found that works successfully and I've used that in a few different projects. There's some other options like I've used the V2 Music or the V Music 2 or something like that. It was very good in the old days, but it's very expensive now. I think they still charge about £30 for them. This module was about £2 or £3. 
And this again was about two or three pound, and that was about two or three pound. So let's go ahead and get that going. To start with, I'm gonna need some of these, what are they, female to female connectors, jumpers. Could of course go and solder this all together. Do I need female to female? No, I don't need any female to female, so get rid of those, don't want those. What do I want? I want the female to male. There we go, some female sockets to male pins. So, what do we need? Well, this device here needs 5 volts, I believe. It does have 5 volts written on it, so I'm going to connect grey to ground, purple to 5 volts. Grey to ground, purple to 5 volts. Double check these things, you don't want to get it wrong. It's always depressing when you blow up something that's brand new and you've not even had any fun with it yet. Let's connect those up. I don't know what the pin at the far end is. It's got VT or V1 written on it. What I should probably do before going too far and power this up is get on the computer, check the seller's listing and just double check what these pins are actually for. Well, I've connected these all up. The purple, the grey one, sorry, I know it's ground. That's going to go in there. The purple one is 5 volts, and my V in will be 5 volts, so I'll connect that to there. And then I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, 4 of those into digital ins. And just off the top of my head, I'm going to use completely random here, wherever they go in. I say wherever they go in, I want them in there. And I've connected those to pin. 7654. Am I missing something? Oh, my purple one's come out of the in. So essentially, that's that board connected up. Could probably test this board by putting some power on it and then pressing these buttons and just checking that the actual ports go high. But I'm going to run a little simple test program here to light an LED up if it detects one of those pins go high. That took a couple of minutes. What I did was loaded up the example sketch in Arduino. It was the digital basic button, I think it's called. Yeah, it's called button. All I changed in there was where it says is if you press pin two or make pin two high, I changed that to seven. And what that will do is make pin 13 high if it receives a high pulse on pin 2, an input. Let's power that up. It is on and then if I press, which button was it? B, you can see this green LED there switches on. So there is definitely a nice wireless link going on there. I don't know what the range is but certainly from the other side of the room it's working fine. The next thing I've got to do now is write up a little routine to take advantage of A, B, C, D, so the four buttons. And what I'm going to have that do is trigger four different sounds off this little MP3 board. Now this one is a little bit more complicated to get going. I have used them before, so I'm literally just going to load up some example sketch that I've saved for something else and just modify it so that it triggers a different track. For example, when I press A, it will send a signal to play MP3 1 on there. If I press B, it will play MP3 2 and so on. It will only support A, B, C, D. I guess if you wanted to get more features out of this, you could write a little subroutine on here that if you press A, it then waits for another press and you could then press B or C or D and you could make little sub-menus that work on combinations of button presses. So you could do more than just four things with this, but you'd have to get a bit clever and think about how you're going to get it to do that. You know, it could be, you know, you press A and it waits for another one and you could have four commands in there and then if you press B it launches into a, another routine where it sits waiting for you to press another button and if you haven't pressed a button in a certain time it could drop back out of that loop uh, and then start waiting for an initial button again. So you could have quite a few more features off this, but for the purpose of this little project, I only really need four, four sound effects. 
what I will need to do now, of course, is connect up my little MP3 module. I do believe that I only need four wires for this, and I could probably get away with three because I don't need to transmit data back. There is a, an ability on here for it to report back what track it's playing. It could also maybe uh, report back MP3 tag ID, so if you've got artist name and jo uh, genre on there, it could actually report that back and display it on a screen. So it's quite a powerful little module, but I've not really got into using all the features. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to put blue for negative, purple for positive. I believe it is 5 volts, this unit. I hope it's not 3.3. .3. If it is, I might blow it up. So a quick search on the interweb shows that these are selling for about £2 each at the moment, which I don't think is bad for a little MP3 player. We've got the power requirements is 3 volts to 5.5 volts. So we can bung anything off this Arduino board as long as our VIN remains below 5.5 volts. So blue ground and purple 5 volts. There is, I believe, some stipulation. It's going to be related to my code as to where this RX or TX goes. I'll have to find my example sketch and have a look at that. Cup of coffee later, caffeinated kiwis. Thanks to my sister for sending that cup all the way from New Zealand. I have managed to get this thing to work. One of the problems I had was getting the thing to work at all. So I did find a 16 gig micro USB. I downloaded some royalty free samples from YouTube. They came down as MP3 and this thing says it's compatible with MP3, but I just could not get anything out of it at all. Now, first thing I did was actually stick an LED into the Arduino board, the negative into ground there. And I actually took the outputs from here out, connected them to the LED, press the buttons, and I can actually see this LED flashing when I press the corresponding button. So I knew that the receiver was working. So I was thinking, why, why isn't this thing working? I put the micro USB, the, the SD card back in, sorry, and then checked the MP3 files, and they, they seemed okay from YouTube, but I used uh, some conversion software there to actually convert them from MP3 back into MP3, named them 1, 2, 3, and 4, put them back on the card, and then it seemed to work fine. So here's a little example using the device here. I'm going to just boot that up. Now what it does first is, using the example code, there is a manufacturer name there, it's uh, C-A-T-A-L-E-X. If you search for that, you'll find the setup code. And what that does is configures this player here to use the micro SD card. It configures some various other things on there, volume, that sort of thing. And now that is functioning. And here we go. I'm going to press a button. And through my little speaker setup over here, I've got some sound effects. Four different sound effects on there. That one's still going. It's a longer one. And then finally the fourth sound effect. And you can see the MP3 player is active when this little LED flashes. So if your LED isn't flashing, it's not trying to access anything on there. If it's flashing away, it's trying to read a file, you should be getting some sound output. If you're not sure about your sound output, try some different things like headphones or PC speakers. I need some of this now. I'm not going to give the code away because half of the fun of working with the Arduino is figuring out the code, but there was no special code needed for this little receiver unit. It's got four digital outputs on there and that just pipes straight into the Arduino. So you can use a very basic, if a button is high sketch, switch something on. Then for this, you do have a bit of a setup code as I explained, you'll have to get that probably have a go at activating this on its own before you try coupling it with anything else. Once you've got this thing working, you can actually just set up some if scenarios where it says, if pin whatever is high, send out the play file one uh, code, and it will send the file one code out and off it will go. It shuts down because this power bank doesn't see a load on here because it doesn't use much power at all. So 
Really quite a quick, simple little uh, sound box there. 